show you the bursar. A couple of quick tips before we head in. Remember to keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times, as well as remaining seated at all times. It is a very bumpy road ahead, so this is for your safety. If you've got little ones, they can sit on your lap. They'll probably see better that way. Just please keep them on the same lap from start to finish. Do not hand them from lap to lap. Hold them up in the air or allow them to stand at any time, even if I'm fully stopped. Also, it's really important for your safety and the safety of those around you that you keep your face coverings on fully throughout our entire journey that is up over your nose and under your chin at all times. Really appreciate it, friends. It looks like we have been given the warden's final all clear to head on into the reserve. So twin day, that does mean let's go. Of course, this is a photo safari. If you're hoping to get some good photos, make sure to have your cameras out and ready, but hold on to them tightly if anything should fall from the truck. Once we're out of reserve, which is now, I am not permitted to stop and help you retreat it. Thank you so much. Now we're checking out the Little Aturi Forest first, and we're seeing animal activity on both sides of the truck. Here to our left side, those are called bongos. They're orange with white stripes. They have those pointed horns. And then you'll see an okapi here to your right side. Now that's a reddish brown animal with black and white striped front and back legs. And those stripes make that animal look like it is related to a zebra in some way. That's actually the closest living relative to a giraffe. And we can tell that because its skull structure is almost identical to a giraffe. Also because of its long tongue. Now we're seeing greater kudu on both sides of the truck. There's one here to the left as well. Those are the tall tan antelope making their way through the bushes. It appears that we spotted females. We can tell because they didn't have horns. Males of that species will. Now friends, do make sure that your nose is covered by your face covering. It's really important that your nose is covered. Thank you so much. We'll see a black rhino now over to your left side. Really exciting to see because unfortunately their numbers are dwindling in the wild. Only about 5,000 of them left. And that's because they are being poached for their horns. People think that rhino horns have medicinal purposes, but that's not the case. Those horns are made from keratin, which is exactly what our fingernails and hair is made from. So really, no use to anyone except for to the rhino that the horn belonged to in the first place. Now that's quite a large animal, but it's actually one of the smaller species of rhino at only 3,000 pounds. White rhinos are much larger. We could also see those along the way. So speaking of what else we might see, we're going to head out of the forest and make our way down the road toward the Safi River. Go ahead and take a look at the animal spotting guide, which is located right above your head. That will give you an idea as to all of the animals that we could possibly see out on the reserve. Now we don't always see all of them, and that's due to their natural migrations as well as the time of day. We have already had some good luck though spotting active animals, and hopefully that will continue to be the case here in the Safi River. We will want to keep an eye out on land and in the water for animals that live in these parts. Hippos! Take a look to our left side behind the island. Quite a few Nile hippopotamus to see. And many of them are fully submerged. They can stay that way for a good long time, about eight minutes at a time. That's how long they can hold their breath. They do have a fun animal group name. They're called a float of hippos. Also, we're seeing quite a few pinkback pelicans on the island, and those large white birds look pretty compact. They have a surprisingly large wingspan. It's nine feet across, which for reference is the same as the width of the canopy that you're sitting under right now. The pelicans like to hit hang out in large groups like the one that we spotted there, which is called the Pod of Pelicans. It'll stay that way for about nine months out of the year. 
So most of the time, it looks like somebody planted it with its roots in the air, completely upside down. That's why that tree does have one of its nicknames. We call it the upside down tree. And the Baobab is a great sign that we're gonna head out onto the savannah. From here, we'll have a beautiful vantage point at the landscape below, and you'll notice it's quite different from what we saw in the forest. There's less brush and tree coverage here, so these animals can't really rely on camouflage for safety. They need to have other characteristics that help to keep them safe in wide open spaces. Maybe they're really small and agile like a springbok, or big like a giraffe or an elephant, which we're definitely gonna see here or they travel in herds. That's a pretty common one out on the savannah. Animals like wildebeest will travel in massive numbers to keep themselves safe from predators. Right at the base of the hill here, we are gonna be seeing a Maasai giraffe. There's one up against a tree that you'll see to your right side. And if you look further back in the bush line, you'll see more giraffes, but also a small tan species of antelope called springbok. That's all over to your right side here. So we are seeing these giraffes eat, and that is a pretty common thing to see Maasai giraffes do. They eat for about 20 hours out of their day. So it looks like we will see some more as we pull forward, and when we do, see if you can catch a glimpse of a giraffe tongue. Their tongues are not pink like ours, they're more of a purplish blue color. Because they eat for so much throughout the day, if their tongues were pink, they would get sunburnt being exposed to the elements, so it's a good thing they're blue. You've probably noticed the Ancoli cattle, they have those impressive horns, they can get to be six feet across, but they're not as heavy as they look. Those horns are mostly hollow inside, they do have a honeycomb-like structure. Also, we'll be seeing a species of zebra here called Hartman's Mountain Zebras, and we'll continue to get a good look as we pull forward at those beautiful black and white striped animals. Take a look to your left side and see if you can spot wild dogs. These are African wild dogs. They're laying pretty flat in the grass to our left side. You're looking for orange and black and white animals. Especially taking a nap in the shade like that, they do look a bit like our dogs at home, but they only have four toes. Domestic dogs like ours have five. All right, so we'll see my favorite species of antelope here. They're this beautiful dark brown color. Those are called sable antelope back along the bush line. They have those sharp backwards curved horns, which they'll use to fend off predators that might like to attack them from behind, such as a lion. So we're gonna get a good look at the zebras. And of course the age old question is, are these animals black with white stripes or white with black stripes? For the Hartman's Mountain Zebra, the answer is black with white stripes, and we can tell that because their noses are black. That's the underlying coat color. The white is on top of that. If you do spot any that are smaller than the rest, as we pull forward, you're probably seeing a younger zebra called a foal. And the foal will actually imprint on its mother's stripe pattern, so it can tell her apart from the rest of the group of zebras. Each one has a slightly different stripe pattern, just like we have a fingerprint. And that is also true for the wild dogs. Oh, look at that zebra rolling around in the dirt, cooling itself off. It's gonna become more black and gray rather than black and white. <laughs> to reach the leaves that are really high up on the trees here in the savannah. You guys see that blue tongue? Now it is so hard to believe getting a really good look at that animal, but they actually have the same amount of vertebrae in their neck that we have in ours. And it is seven. Theirs are just much, much larger than ours, so their necks are much longer and considerably more flexible than ours. Now we'll get another really good look at the Ancoli cattle here. We do also call them Watusi cattle. That's named after the tribe that domesticated them. And they're the only domestic animal that you'll see on the reserve. See if the Ancoli cattle wants to cross the road. Kind of gonna walk along. 
along really close, but because of those horns, they're not the easiest animal to make our way by. There we go. All right, so look at the crest of the hill to our right side as we do come around this curve. There is a herd of wildebeest way up at the top of that hill, so we might see them a little bit better as we continue forward. Those animals are black, uh, gray with black stripes on their neck, and they travel in really big numbers, sometimes 1.5 million wildebeest at one time, making them one of the most densely packed migrating animals on Earth. So remember I said there is definitely safety in numbers, so other animals like zebras that spend time in less big groups will actually kind of join up with a herd of wildebeest. They blend right in, and then they also get the benefit of safety in numbers. Now it looks like a really big animal has been through here up ahead because I don't know any small creature that could crack a tree right in half like this one coming up on the right. And maybe that means there's been some elephant activity in these parts. If there has been, I sure hope we get to spot one. So I see some large ears moving. It looks like we're gonna be doubly lucky and see two elephants coming up on our right side. I pull forward we'll get a slightly better look at them. So these are African elephants and you'll notice they are flapping those giant ears. The ears are roughly in the shape of the continent of Africa which helps us to know that they are African elephants. And they flap them like that to cool themselves off. They can lower their body temperature by 15 degrees just by moving their ears that way. Really helpful because they deal with such a hot environment here in Africa. I know, we definitely wish that we could do that with our ears too. It's so hot today. You might have also noticed that these elephants, oh, and you'll have a look at them as we go across this rickety old bridge. They have dirt and mud and even hay on their backs. Elephants have sensitive skin, just like we do, so they actually toss those items onto their backs on purpose. They toss it there with their trunks. It helps to keep them safe from the sun, like how we'll put on sunscreen before we go to the beach. And looks like on either side of the truck here, we're seeing red clay, which is actually a great place for us to search for more elephants. That's because they'll eat the clay. I do see some tusk marks in it to our right side and footprints trailing off to the left. Depending on how fresh those marks are, we might see some more elephants over this way. But we've already seen two, so you've probably come to the conclusion that they are big animals. Oh, we're definitely going to see some more elephants. It looks like they're actually going to be tossing dirt and mud and some water onto themselves, just like I was talking about. That should be really cool to see. Elephants are actually afraid of bees. The Disney conservation team was able to help put this information to good use. They helped out farmers in Africa that were having a tough time with elephants accidentally stomping on their crops. So they put up beehive fences around the farmland, which helped out twofold because then the elephants didn't want to go anywhere near the crops. And the farmers could make some extra cash selling the honey that the bees naturally produce. So this is a win-win called the Elephants and Bees Project. Such a gorgeous look at these African elephants. Kind of starting to tussle with each other just a bit, trying to show some dominance. But also having a lot of fun rolling around in the mud. I think we'll see the wildebeest a bit better here to your right side. Keep in mind, the term wildebeest literally translates from Afrikaans to wild beast, and you can kind of see why if you get a good look. Those are super unique looking creatures. Not many other species look a lot like, like a lot like a wildebeest. So we'll head out of elephant country where we've had some great luck, and this is Flamingo Island, home to the greater flamingos. They are the lightest pink of all flamingo species, but you might notice that some of them are a lighter gray color. Those are flamingo chicks. They're hatched a light gray color. They get their pink shade from the brine shrimp and krill that they eat. They are very social animals, so it's common that we find them in a large group like this one. We call that a flamboyance of flamingos. 
Now you might notice some of them standing on one leg in the water. One of the reasons they do this is to regulate their body temperature, much like how we'll put one leg outside the covers at night if we're a bit too hot and we need to cool off. Rhinos like to roll around in the mud in the hot afternoon. Helps to cool them off and works to keep their skin safe from the harsh savanna sun, just like we've seen many other animals using mud, like the elephants and even the zebra. here, which is actually a great place for an animal to be hiding from the heat that's already upon us today. And if you are an expert animal spotter, you might be able to see cheetahs way back on the hillside, completely in the shade, laying completely flat. And it's a tricky one, especially with their spots, they blend in extremely well. So amazing animal spotting if you saw them. Maybe we'll see some more here. Oh, there's one that's been easier to see. So this one's kind of over your left shoulder. It is laying down with its head perked up. Hopefully you guys can see that right above that burlap. Good spotting friends. Of course, they are the fastest land mammal moving from zero to 60 miles an hour in only three seconds. They don't hold top speed for all that long though, about the length of two football fields before they'll slow down. And that animal does actually hunt during the day, which sets it apart from many other large predators that hunt overnight. straight to our left side here. There's one laying down parallel to the track and there's actually three over that way, but one of them is much easier to see than the rest. The tusks are facing towards the back side of the truck. So we are seeing a sounder of warthogs here. That's their animal grouping, and they are the largest land burrowing mammal. They put their backsides into their burrows first and sit with their faces sticking out to look for predators. See those Bontabak again over this way to our right side and large yellow eggs on the ground to the right side of us. Now it's a little bit of a trick question since we didn't spot the species that laid those, but those are ostrich eggs. And they're worth noting, just like the birds that laid them, the ostrich eggs will weigh three pounds. That's about equivalent to two dozen chicken eggs. And they are sturdy enough for a full grown man to stand on them without the egg cracking. Makes sense that they are so large and sturdy since they're laid by the ostrich, which is the largest bird on earth.
we are going to head off of the reserve, but I think we spotted some truly cool animals along the way. We saw black rhinos, a tower of giraffes, we even saw a bloat of hippos. Unfortunately, many of these species are endangered in the wild, but fortunately we can do plenty to help them out, including reduce, reuse, recycle. One specific thing we can recycle to help out animals that are dealing with deforestation is your old small electronics like cell phones, tablets, and iPods. Coltan is used to produce these items, and that's one of the things that's being mined for in areas where these animals are losing land. So the more that we responsibly recycle, the better off they are.